Hi everyone and welcome to Alt VR. Alt VR is a non-gaming VR YouTube channel. Um, so we're doing lots of interesting things that fall outside of the game genre, like virtual reality experiments. So for instance, we have uh, used virtual reality in sensory deprivation tanks. Um, we've also created out of body experiences uh, using stereo 3D cameras that we place outside of our bodies and feed the link into a VR headset. We've also done the same with drones, so that you play yourself basically in third person with a drone following after you. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff like that, like virtual reality apartments that are calibrated in one-to-one -one scale to your real apartment. So if this sounds like it's something for you, then please click the subscribe button below the video. Now for this video, we're also checking out uh, applications that we find interesting at the Steam store that fall outside of the non-gaming genre. Um, so we're especially interested in nature and art and any kind of aesthetic experience. And in this episode, we're checking out the Smithsonian American Art Museum. I'm quite sure that's what it's called. Uh, I think I've heard of this museum before. I'm, I live in Norway, um, so I don't really know if it's a popular museum, but I think it is. Um, and there's a small section that is dedicated so you can actually experience this in virtual reality. And uh, yeah, it's really well made. Uh, so let's check it out. is virgin enthroned by Abbot Henderson Thayer. The subjects in the painting were based on Thayer's three children, Mary, Gerald, and Gladys. During the 1880s, Thayer and his wife experienced the tragedy of losing their two other children when they died unexpectedly, just one year apart. This loss took an emotional toll on the couple, and as a result, they became financially unstable and moved from place to place. Even with these hardships, Thayer's portraits were in demand. Famous figures such as George Washington Cable, Mark Twain, and Henry James were among the people who sat for his portraits. This relief is titled, Adoration of St. Joan of Arc by J. William Fosdick. In the center of the panel, you see Joan of Arc. At the turn of the 20th century, she was a popular symbol in American culture. Why would a 15th century French martyr capture the attention of Americans at that time? Because she represented the new woman in the modern world and even inspired women fighting for the right to vote. Creative powerhouses such as Mark Twain, Anna Hyatt Huntington, and George Bernard Shaw also turned to her for inspiration in their work. Have you ever experienced the aurora borealis? The sky lights up like a glowing curtain overhead that is as profoundly unsettling as it is beautiful. This isn't just any landscape. Frederick Edwin Church painted the ethereal phenomenon in 1865 and is considered to be the artist's response to the Civil War. When Church painted this picture, we were just beginning to understand electromagnetics. So the auroras were not understood by science and still seen as an omen from God. Perhaps his judgment was directed at the Americans for the sin of tolerating slavery. Press the play
Did you know that some of America's greatest sculptures are hidden in cemeteries? In 1885, Marion Hooper Clover Adams, an amateur photographer and the wife of the writer Henry Adams, committed suicide by drinking poisonous chemicals used to develop film. This haunting painting by Elihu Vedder is The Cup of Death. It's based on one of the illustrations he created for a deluxe edition of Edward Fitzgerald's translation of the 12th century Persian text, Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Its theme resonated with late 19th century Americans who were still reeling from the Civil War, as well as dealing with big changes from Darwinism to industrialization. This 1889 sculpture study depicts the goddess Diana, the Roman goddess of the hunt. Her body is positioned so as to hold a bow and arrow. At the time, This is an oil painting by the self-taught painter Charles Walter Stetson. Its title is Magnolia, and it's indicative of what made Stetson's work stand out. It's allegorical, imaginative qualities and rich colors. This is an oil the artist of this work, Abbot Thayer, was moved by the writing of Robert Louis Stevenson, whose dramatic characterizations of human conflict resonated with the artist. So, Thayer painted Stevenson Memorial as a tribute to the writer after his passing. An angel sits on a rock with a mysterious word scrawled on it. Can you read it? It says V-A-E-A. -A. It refers to Mount Vaya in the Samoan Islands where Stevenson was buried after his death. This is The Golden Age by John Lafarge. Known for his murals in Trinity Church in Boston, Church of the Ascension in New York City, and for his contributions to reviving the art of stained glass in America. He was well-educated and traveled extensively over his lifetime, learning several ancient and modern languages. He was inspired by traditions of religious art and French landscape painting, as well as by Japanese prints which he collected. You're looking at what many consider the most famous sculpture of the 19th century, the Greek slave. The first life-size fully nude sculpture of a woman exhibited to the public in the United States. The sculptor, Hiram Powers, received international acclaim and elevated the reputation of American art worldwide. With such fanfare, Powers produced six full-scale marble examples of the Greek slave. The cast in the Smithsonian You're looking at what This painting by Henry O. Walker shows the wife and son of William Thomas Evans. Evans was a businessman and art collector who donated a large number of paintings to the Smithsonian American Art Museum in 1915. In addition to painting portraits, Walker painted murals that can be found in many public buildings across the United States, including the Library of Congress and the Massachusetts State House. This is the interlude by William Kendall. In it, you see one of his daughters and his wife. At first glance, it simply looks like a sweet scene of a bedtime story. But there's something else going on. Margaret turns her face away from her husband, the artist, to focus her affection on her daughter, while the little girl has a wide-eyed, almost haunted expression. At the time, the artist was having an affair with a much younger woman, causing him to eventually divorce his wife so you could read this image as an ominous sign of things to come. This is not your standard family portrait. Although the artist, Abbott Henderson Thayer, had his children pose as models, their presence in the painting wasn't really aimed at conveying a religious scene. But when you take in its composition and elaborate frame, you can't help but see similarities to paintings of the Virgin Mary and saints from the Italian Renaissance. But the artist had a broader vision, not limited to religion. An expression of love, strength, and beauty 
embodied in the ideal and eternal feminine. All right, everyone, that was it for this video. If you enjoyed this stuff and other things that we do, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell below the video. I've added the link to this application in the description if you want to check it out. Thank you.